All right. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for logging in. We have a good online crowd. I'm Rebecca Graves, and I'm the education librarian down at the Health Sciences Library. And for this hour, I'm going to talk about finding health sciences literature. And I know for some of you, this is going to be review. Um, hopefully, um, I'll be teaching you some new techniques today. Um, I don't have a handout, so it's just going to be all screen share looking at three databases specifically, unless, of course, you all have some questions elsewhere. Um, so if you have questions, you can keep them in. Um, Thank you. And so my objective today is we're going to go through Scopus, then we're going to look at PubMed, and then we're going to look at CINAHL. Um, and we're going to, in all three of those, we're going to look at um, subjects, at terms, how you find the terms for that. Um, and then we're going to look at searching techniques. I'm going to look at the field searching specifically. Um, and then also how you save your searches. So I'm not sure if everybody has accounts to save, but you can set up accounts in each of those. Um, and, and there's going to be a few other things I'll talk about in between, but those are the big things is looking at Scopus, a PubMed Medline, PubMed parentheses Medline, and CINAHL, and then looking at using the terms, um, using field searching, and then setting up accounts. Um, and I'm going to ask, there's a few people in the room and also the folks online, is what do you hope to learn today? What questions do you have? So you can type those in or shout those out to the room. Does anybody have specifics that you want to learn? Specific questions about the databases? Okay. I'm not hearing any questions. If you do, oh, if there's a location. Oh, perfect. So how to locate mesh terms is one of them. And so we will definitely be talking about that. Um, and um, if you do have questions as you go along, feel free to shout them out, type them in, and we'll work them into the session. Um, so I'm going to dive into searching. I have the screen share up. I mean, you could go to the MU General Library website. I'm going to close the ready reference. And you could go to the um, databases, like looking up a database, or you could search for it. I usually go straight to the Health Sciences Library, partly because I'm biased, because that's the branch that I'm in. Um, but also because we pull these databases out on the top, on our top page. So CINAHL, um, PubMed, and Scopus, and those are the three that we're going to be looking at. So that's going to be where I'm going to be starting from. Yes. Can you review what topics are better searched in which site? Oh, all right. So the question is which topics are better searched in which site? And this is a perfect time to do that. So um, Scopus is the broadest of the three databases we're going to look at today. It actually includes Medline. So what's in PubMed, what's in Ovid Medline. Um, should be in scope. Now, PubMed does have some additional art citations, like another one to two percent of its content that doesn't make it into Scopus. But you'll find most of PubMed in Scopus. Plus, you'll find Embase, which is a European <laughs> database. So, if you're looking for a broader search, Scopus is an excellent choice. Um, it also includes Compendex, which is engineering and informatics. So, if you're looking at um, robotics, if you're looking at informatics, electronic records, Scopus would be a good place to search for that. It also has some a, the search feature of looking at cited references. So if you want to search that way as opposed to mash or keywords, that would be one. Um, PubMed has, PubMed's the big premier U.S. biomedical database, really focuses on nursing, I mean, Oh, that's okay. On medical nursing, has some dentistry in there. Um, it actually has a really um, assistive, helpful search interface. Um, so, <laughs> so you could use, I'm kind of distracted a little bit. Sorry about that. For those who are not in the room. 
So Scopus and PubMed are similar, although Scopus is broader and it includes the Compendex, it includes the engineering, um, and it also includes some humanities databases. CINAHL is focused on nursing, so it's the cumulative index of nursing and allied health. Um, so if you want to look at nursing, um, you might actually search both databases. It does have overlap with PubMed, um, but it actually has better indexing for nursing theory, nursing interventions. So depending what you're looking for, it might be easier to pull it out of CINAHL because of the indexing. Um, so there's a fair amount of overlap depending upon which topic, you know, which health specialty you're looking at between these three, but they do have differences. Um, so hopefully that answered that question. All right, now I'm gonna go into Scopus and I, you can go ahead and click on it. If you're off campus, you'll have to log in with your paw print. Um, I actually have it preload, pre-opened up here. Um, and has it, uh, so how many of you, have you searched Scopus before? Have you used Scopus before? So those in the room are yes, no. Okay, there's two yeses, one no. Yes and a no, one no. Okay, so I'm gonna start with some of the basics. So those of you who have searched it before, um, bear with me, um, but I'll be showing some others. Now, usually I flip this, but I decided to be devious today. And I said, I'm gonna start for Scopus because I, give the databases personalities. Um, I, you work the job long enough, things do have personalities. So Scopus to me is that surly assistant. They're really good at what they do, so you don't wanna let them go, but they don't really do any extra work. So, um, and I'll explain more what I mean about that. So when you look on here, you see that you can search, notice they have an example and the multi-word or two-word phrase has quotes around it. So when you're searching in Scopus, you actually, if you have multi-word phrases, you actually wanna put them in quotes. And the example I'm gonna be working with today is sexually acquired diseases. So I was thinking of looking for evaluating um, an intervention or a program to prevent sexually acquired diseases. Um, so that's the example I'm working on, and those are going to be the terms that I'm looking at. Um, if you want to work on your own term while we're working through this, you're welcome to it. And so I have Scopus up, and I'm going to type in a term. So I'm going to type in sexually acquired diseases, and it's more than one word, so I'm going to put quotes around it. And this is where, and I want to talk about um, subject headings and even just terms. Doesn't matter if you're searching Scopus, PubMed, CINAHL, what you're searching, you want to think about, well, what other terms could be used for this topic? Um, and now I wouldn't, I'm going to actually just hit search for this example, just because you might say, well, this is a topic that's new to me. I don't know anything about it. All right, I typed something wrong. Did I type acquired wrong? All right, what did I type wrong? Okay, maybe I didn't type anything wrong, but so, all right, so this is a perfect learning opportunity. I just said this is a huge database, right? It's got three databases in it. I got 16 results. So there's something wrong with, or something, well, I, with 16 results, I'd say there's something wrong, or at least weak, or something not good about my search. Um, so that's why I said, what did I type wrong? <laughs> because I often misspell things. Um, so one thing you can do is when you think about the terms, because they, they matter greatly in your searching. So if I'm looking at this, I'm like going, oh, okay, number eight. I see, it's a sexually transmitted diseases. So I'm like, okay. Um, and then there's one that's venereal diseases. Um, and then genital infections. So I'm looking through the terms, oh, acquired immunodeficiency or HIV, you know. So when I look through here, I start to think, oh, there's a lot of different ways I can say this and they're possibly better than what I did. So now I'm gonna click back on search 
And I can leave that term there because maybe those 16 are unique. And then I'm assuming you're all familiar with or. So this is, and well, actually, I'll assume that somebody's not. Um, <laughs> I'll go back the other way. So in case anybody isn't, um, you have or and or not are the basic connectors. And so if I say, well, sexually transmitted or how about sexually or sexually acquired diseases? And I can't talk and type at the same time. Um, and then I could keep going with or, like maybe there's specific ones. But so like here's another one. And so again, this isn't necessarily how you would do your search right away, but I'm building up to like why these terms are important. So if I add in sexually acquired or sexually transmitted, now I'm getting 52,000. So I'm like, ah, okay. Now I've cracked, like I've started to see it. Um, and, and then here's like papilloma and, or, you know, H, let's see. Um, and I'm trying to scan these to see, cause, cause then you could actually get to specific, oh, like chlamydia, that's what I was looking for. So I'm like, well, what happens if I put in specific terms? So let me add in or chlamydia. Now I am up to 15 or 79. Um, and so this is one of those pieces because somebody earlier asked about mesh terms. Scopus does actually have the mesh terms in the records, but it doesn't automatically pull those up for you. It actually searches what you put in. So the default is it says title, abs, and key. So that's the title of the citation. So the title field, the abstract field, and the keyword field, meaning the mesh terms the subject terms for Embase and the author's keywords. Um, so that's a fairly broad, you know, it's a good context set to look at, you know, the context of the title, the context of the abstract, and then your keywords. But Scopus isn't suggesting any terms to me. And that's why I call it that snarky or surly or kind of that, that assistant with attitude is that it searches exactly what you put in there and no more. So when you're thinking of your topic, when you're looking to find the health literature, um, um, take a sheet of paper, and for the folks in the room, I actually had some paper available, and write down your topic. Um, if you're in nursing or medicine, you'll know about PICO, which is your patient, I for intervention, C for comparator, O for outcomes. And those can give you ways to divide up your search. So you could say, well, what's the P of my search? What's the patient? Grouping, what's the problem? So this could be sexually transmitted diseases. So under the P, you might have several words. You could have sexually tra transmitted diseases. There's also sexually transmitted infections. Um, sexually acquired diseases, which we saw does not have a lot of punch. So you may decide to just leave that off. Um, and then you could do the specifics. You could say, well, I want chlamydia. I want gonorrhea. I want syphilis. Well, I don't want them, but I want to search on them. Um, so, and then you would just put ors between all of those. And so that's one way to conceptualize your search. So that would be your search set. And if you look on the screen, you see title, abstract, key, and it's got three terms there. And so I could make, it might, if you're um, doing a broad, actually, so let me stop here and take a step back. Here's another technique is to stop and think, am I doing a specific search, a targeted search, or am I doing a broad comprehensive search? And that's where you would want to stop and say, okay, when I'm looking at my term set, if I'm doing a comprehensive search, like if I'm doing a literature review, or specifically if I'm doing a systematic literature review, I definitely want to get as many terms as there are to describe this topic. Um, and so I would work on a list. And so for that, I would definitely have sexually acquired, sexually transmitted, diseases, infections. I would have chlamydia, syphilis, herpes, HIV infections, warts. Um, and so I would list as many as I wanted, or as many as there were, um, not wanted. If I'm doing a targeted search, if I'm saying, well, no, no, I don't want to do a whole review of the literature. If I'm doing targeted, then I would say, well, what am I looking for? Am I looking at all sexually transmitted diseases or am I looking just at chlamydia? And if I'm looking just at chlamydia, I'm going to search on chlamydia. I might include the broader term just in case there's something there. 
Um, but I'm not going to add in all the other ones. I'm not going to put in gonorrhea or syphilis because I'm not looking for those. So that's one key piece is may, stop and think, what am I looking for? How many of these terms do I need? If I'm comprehensive, think of all the terms you can and you're like, well, how do I know the terms? Well, we were just walking through that, which is where you search. And then as you read through the titles, you say, oh, there's another way to phrase it. And then as you find the articles, you might find some other terms. Uh, as you talk to your colleagues and your classmates, you, you may find some other terms. And so then you would come back and you would revise your search. Um, any questions on that part, like coming up with terms? When we get to PubMed and look at MASH, um, I mean, we'll look at a, bit, a little bit here, um, but we'll talk some more about finding terms. How do you come up with terms? I mean, one of it is that you actually do look at the citations. Now, we've only looked at one piece of our search, just the sexually, the STIs. Um, we haven't looked at the prevention and the inner, you know, trying to do a prevention intervention. Um, so, <laughs> I've just got distracted by the title number five. I'm not quite sure what joke they're, you know, how much can the koala bear bear? Um, so, I'm like, so every so often you have some funny titles in here and they kind of stop me and I'm like, no, I must keep focused on my dumb. Um, so, <laughs> you might end up like looking at some of the citations, looking at the abstract, um, and that'll feed into what you know about the topic and the terms that you see and how you, you know, how are people in your field writing about it? So that's one of the big things is just keep either a sheet of paper or a document, could be a Google document, whatever works for you, and keep track of your terms, especially if you're doing a broader, a bigger project. If you're doing a, you know, all you need to do is find something, you just need to sit down and find it and you're done, you know, one session in and out, not as big a deal. But if you're working on a bigger project, you definitely want to track your terms. All right. Um, I have to check my notes to make sure I stay on track. Um, another piece to keep in mind is are you, when you're looking at your topic, for example, are you looking at, you know, viruses or are you looking at um, infections? Are you looking at drugs? Are you looking at procedures? So think about the terms in that way um, to come up with them. Um, so now, I, obviously, we're not going to go through 79 citations. So I want to click back on search. Um, and you could add more to this line. Uh, I like, since Scopus actually gives you this plus at the far right, if you click on that, it, you see that it gives you another line to search on. And it automatically puts an and in there. So it makes it really nice to have your different chunks or sets of terms. So you might have your P of your PICO at the top. So you have your P terms for your problem or patient. Um, and then the next set you could do, maybe it's your intervention or your comparison. Um, some people like to search on the outcomes. I usually, just FYI, for, I find outcomes can be harder to search on. So I usually look at, so I would usually, if you're following a PICO format, you don't have to. Um, you can just chunk it up and say, well, what, uh, one professor actually has noun and verb. He's like, what's the noun, the, like sexually acquired diseases or chlamydia, and then what's the verb? It's like, um, it could be education or it could be prevention. Um, so you could type in that set of terms. And you might just start with, I mean, if you don't know any other terms, there's nothing wrong with just starting with one term um, and then clicking search again. And we still have a huge set. But I mean, we've, we've cut it down a lot, but we still have a huge set. Um, but this gives me, a, I often will say, okay, let me see if I'm in the ballpark. If I'm on the right, well, to mix my metaphors, if I'm in the ballpark or I'm on the right trail. Um, so the first one's health knowledge. It may or may not be um, prevention. Um, so we're looking at sexual risk. Number three, though, looks right on. So it's like prevention for young people for HIV. And this is an evaluation of a pilot intervention. And 
that brings me to my next set of terms. So we have our sexual STIs or STDs. Then we have our prevention, and we may come up with other terms for prevention, but then we can actually add a third line to our search, which is going to be the evaluation because most, because we probably, I'm assuming most of us are going to want research on this. We're, want, we're going to want to see if, did somebody do this already and did it work? Because why should I do an education program or a prevention program um, that's going to fail or that's not going to be followed? Um, so if something's interesting or looks relevant, there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can check the box, and this works for all the databases. You can check the box, and in Scopus, it's add to list. And that is your temporary list. So when I click on that, it's going to say the document was added to your temporary list. Um, if you're not logged into your account, which we haven't gotten to yet, um, if I were to close out of Scopus now, or if I were to go away to get a drink and I got distracted by a phone call, this would time out and then I would lose this temporary list and I would lose the search that I've done. So um, do pay attention, you know, to make sure that um, you got what you needed before you close out your search or um, go off with the t potential of being distracted. Why would you, I mean, temporary lists are great because you can, instead of me actually having to track this down, I can actually scan pretty quickly the first few citations to say, okay, that one looks good. Um, maybe number seven. Um, and, um, Maybe number 11, I mean, because prophylactic, I mean, it, and then that actually raises more questions. Are you looking for education or are you looking for a treatment intervention? So I can't emphasize enough how much of it comes back to your question um, and what you're asking and what you're researching and which terms come up. And again, if it's, an, uh, if it's a big project, if it's a big question, you're going to need to take notes. Um, all right, so, and I'm looking at the time going, well, I'm gonna have to speed it up. Um, okay, so maybe number 13. And so again, you get the idea that I would scroll through here, I would select the citations, and then I can add them to my list, ah, add to list. Um, and that way, I can keep going through my search, I could come back to the beginning, and I could say, okay, how could I narrow this down? I, found, I saw I'm on the right track. Um, I found a couple that I want and they're safely tucked away in my list, at least temporarily. Now I could come in and I could add another line um, to searching. In this part, I might say, well, what do I want to know about prevention? Um, <clears throat> do I want to evaluate it? And so this comes into terms again. So he keeps coming around to those terms. Um, and so some of the terms might be, well, yeah, I want to evaluate it. So I might say evaluation. Um, and then what other things would you think about if you were piloting a project or if you were evaluating if something worked? You might say... Um, assessment. Make, assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you could say review, but that's going to fall into review articles. So it's going to get it's not going to, I mean, we would think of it, but the computer is going to pull up the wrong thing. So that's actually a good example of how you have to think about the terms and like, oh, this works for me, but to the computer, it's not going to get it. Um, another one might be, there's like other terms could be utilization. Um, there's also adherence, outcome, like if you're looking at education, it could be outcomes of education. Um, health behavior, health behavior, or behavioral change, or health behavioral changes. Um, and again, how do you know those terms? Well, part of it is, part of it is some of them you'll know from having looked at the topic, and a lot of it will come from actually putting in one term, seeing what you get back, and you don't have to go through all 3,500. Um, just if you look at, um, <coughs> Like number two, actually this one 
looks really cool. So developing, you know, about, so like here's evaluation of a pilot intervention. Um, we saw the other one before. And so as you go through, you would just, and you can learn a lot from the titles, like here's a prospective study of testing. You know, are you looking at testing? You're like, no, I'm not looking at testing. Um, this one is a continuation of the previous one. I'll put it in there. So as you see that as you go through it, you keep refining your search um, and selecting, you know, and, and it, if I see something, I might as well pick it up now instead of trying to find it later. Um, yeah, so, and I'm, I'm distracting myself by trying to read the title, so I'm going to stop. So I'm going to add these. Um, so I added those two. So I've been building my list of citations and working on my search. It still needs to be refined, but I don't want to actually spend the whole time on this topic because this is actually, I picked this and I said, wow, this is actually a hard one to nail down. Um, therapy is much easier to nail down faster than interventions of prevention or education. But I believe that gives the idea of how you go through and you're like, okay, I have to think about the terms. How broad do I need to be? Um, how specific can I be? Um, once I have some terms selected, um, I can have them in the list. And if I click on lists, I'll see my citations here. Um, and this would be a good time if I wanted to select them all. I could, if you use, um, if you use EndNote, you can export to EndNote. Um, <coughs> You can also mail, email them to people. So if you're working with a professor or if you have a colleague that you're collaborating with, you can email the citations and say, what do you think about these? Um, and then I wanna talk, I'm gonna still talk a little bit more about searching, but I wanna go to the upper right because you're like, say, well, what if I wanna save these citations? If I go up to the top, does anybody have a Scopus account? Yes, no, okay. If you have one, you can go up and log in. If you don't, you can click on register. And you can go ahead and do that right now if you want to. So you just click on register and you fill out this form. I recommend that you try to keep it as close, like you use the same email address, you know, for Scopus as you do for PubMed, as you do for CINAHL. Um, and the password as much as you can, because they have your, the guidelines on how you have it. And then do you, you can, oh, it's nice. They let you opt in instead of opting out. And then you have to say you've read it. Um, I actually have an account, so I will log in with mine. And once you're logged in, it'll have your name up at the top. And so now what I could do is I could actually save, um, I could save these to a list, to a permanent list. So I could either save it to one that I have, um, and you can see some of these are demos like cats and mental health. Um, or you could, you know, if this is a new project, you can create a new project. You could say STDs prevention, what have you. And then once you have it, you can come up here to your lists. Another feature of having an account is if I click back on search at the top. So this takes me back to document search. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, you see there's your search history. Um, this is another technique for searching. These are actually very helpful because you can see what you've searched already. You could copy and paste this somewhere as a record or print it off. Once you have an account and you're signed in, if you go over to the right, if you click on the bell, you can save this. If I liked this search, I would actually work on it some more to improve it. But if I were happy with the search, I would actually click on the bell and set this up as an alert. And then I can save this and Scopus will automatically run it. So this is a way that you can use Scopus to um, help you keep current on topics. Um, so it comes up and it says, here's your search. Is this what you want its name to be? I could shorten that. Here's the email I have. And then how often do I want it? Um, maybe every month. I certainly don't want it every day. Um, and that, ah, 
Where'd it go? It might have saved it already. Um, that's why I ended up with so many demos um, to go back in and clean it. So you see that uh, you can do it every month. You can say on Friday, and then you can actually have it active or inactive. So you could actually make it dormant or not. Um, if you don't want it to have an alert, you can actually just save it, and then it'll just be saved. It won't, it won't run until you tell it to. And you can get to your searches by coming up to your account, actually coming up to your, to the three bars on the right. And you can look at my Scopus and you can look at your saved searches. And if you click on that, you can see the different searches that you've saved. Um, and then you could rerun those by clicking on them to have it rerun. You can also come up there to the right and under my Scopus and you can look at if there's any alerts. I don't and you could come in and you can update them, you can delete them, you can change them around. Um, and then you see there's saved lists. So, so I only have two alerts because I really don't have that many in Scopus. And then the other one was saved lists. So this would be if you've actually done a search and you want to save those citations um, and come back to them later. And then if you wanted to say, oh, I want to look at these documents and pull them up. Um, I can get to them. So that's the advantage of having your account, is it lets you save your citations and your alerts and your saved searches. And I recommend that you set that up, especially if you have big projects that you're working on. Um, I clicked out of that by go, clicking on search. So now I'm back at document search. And um, <coughs> um, I want to go back down to search history. So you can use search history to set up your alerts to save your searches. Um, you can also use search history to combine sets. So if you did a set um, and you want to come, I don't have it set up for this in this particular instance, but if I had one that was sexually acquired diseases in different terms, and then I had another one that was um, prevention or um, patient education, and I wanted to combine it, I could combine set, combine queries, and they have an example of how to do that. It would be the number, so it'd be like number one and number three. Um, and you see the and not. I'm gonna point, I scroll back up to the top. So here's a lot of tips and searching Scopus. So once you come up with your terms, not only can you feed in the terms, you can actually, so we had that ors in one line and the ands between it, but you can also not out things. So I usually save that for the last line. So if you're going to do an and not, you might say down here and not, and you might have a particular intervention that you don't want or a particular type of study you don't want or a particular population group that you don't want. Um, any questions on that? All right. I've got a couple more things in here before we switch to PubMed. One is I mentioned that I talk about field searching. Scopus defaults to looking at article title, abstract, and keywords, which are your text fields. You can change that up by clicking on that draw down, that pop down arrow, and it'll show you fields. Um, so you could search all the fields, and you could get an idea. Like if you, I generally don't do that because, like my last name is actually a disease name. So you know you can end up getting muddying the waters. I actually found that MUSE um, is a modified early warning score um, used in nursing. It's also an address and it's also a last name. So, you know, so I'm like, I want to keep my authors and I want to keep my stuff separate. So I don't really recommend doing all fields. I mean, it might work for a particular situation. Titles, abstracts, you can look by affiliation if you're looking for people to partner with, um, if you're looking for places to apply for jobs at, you might actually search by affiliation um, to follow people or to see what that institution's doing, to see what research have they published on STDs or um, mental health or what have you. Um, so you can see there's several different options here. If you aren't happy with those options, there's a, some additional ones under advanced. So I'm going to have you all click on advanced. And 
I know that many of you have since have you've used Scopus before. So here's some power searching in Scopus. Um, so once you're set with your terms, if you go into advanced, now Scopus advanced searching is really advanced. Um, um, so you're looking at this going, whoa, I'm not quite sure where I am. So I'll point, you have a couple of queries. So your search string, that's jargon for your search query or your search question. The title abstract keyword is just, remember we searched everything by title abstract keyword. And so it has the first set in quotation mark, or in parentheses with ors, and then you have an and, and then it's telling you the next set was with title abstract keywords, and we only have one word in that, and then and. So it's just the same as we had on the first screen. Um, and they have parentheses around it to tell the computer solve these sets first before combining them back. So like algebra. If you look on the right, you see that you have the and, the or, and the and not, which we talked about. You also have, I want to point out the W, because that means within. So depending on your search, this can be really key. Um, and I'm trying to think if I gave myself an example of that. Um, yes, because if you wanted to do an evaluation of a program, maybe you wanted to have um, evaluate and program those two words, not as an exact phrase, because maybe that's too tight, maybe that's too specific. But if you do program and evaluation, it could be, you know, they could be talking about different things. So they actually, if you're doing title and keywords and abstract, one word could be in the title, one could be in the abstract. So somewhere between an exact phrase with quotation marks and and is the W. So you can say, I want these words closer together. If you do, actually, I am going to, if I clear this out. So what you'd want to do is, I have to do one step before I play with the W, because I'll get in trouble. So down below the operators, you see the field codes. And you see there's a lot more than there were on the main screen. Um, and you might say, well, wow, I'm glad they didn't show all these on the main screen because it can be overwhelming. Um, so maybe I want to look at, um, if I look at textual content, I can click on the pull down arrow and I can do title abstract. So I can click on that. Actually, if I click on the plus on the right side, it actually enters it up here under my search, my search statement a query string or a search statement. And then you see there's a flashing light there. And then that's where I can actually <laughs> click on the W. So I could cut, so I have the W in there and I could put in um, evaluate with, and then it's like, how many words do you think it should be? Maybe three words, five words. Um, and you'll get a feel for that when you read the, read the, um, the literature read the articles in your field. Um, you might say, well, sometimes it could be five words, and that's three words. Um, and the other thing with with is that it'll flip it either order. It could be programs that evaluate this or, you know, so, so, and then I'm gonna click on search just to run the search. Now I didn't combine this with STIs and stuff like that. Actually, I probably should have done that. Let me back up. I backed up too far. All right, so I backed up too far. So I'll redo that, which will actually let you see it one more time. So I go down to my field codes and I click on the plus to put them in. And then I can put in program. And then I can say plus to the W. Oh, I put it first. So I didn't need to put it that way. I did it right the first time. And I want to do three in evaluation. And then I can say at the end of that, then what do I want to do next? And then I want to do and. So I click on the plus. And then what text, what fields do I want to look? Maybe I want to look at, um, maybe I want a tight search and I only want to do keywords. So if I come down to keywords, 
I can do the index terms. And somebody asked earlier about mesh terms. The index terms are the mesh terms, and they're also the embase terms, because remember I said it's another database of embase. Now the trick is, is you have to know what those terms are. And as I said, Scopus isn't that helpful. So it's like, ah, you have to know those. I'm not going to tell them to you. Um, so I probably don't, I mean, you'd have to know, well, what is your mesh term? And I actually happen to um, have written it down and I know it's sexually transmitted infections. Or no, it's sexually transmitted diseases. Ah, and I keep forgetting to click on the plus sign. So you can see it says index terms and I want to key in sexually transmitted diseases. And then I would click search and see what I get. And I get 100 documents. Um, and so the second one's got evaluation of the deadly liver mob program. Mm. All right. So <laughs> that gives you an idea of how you can search by field, how you can narrow down your search. So just to recap, if I click on search at the top um, and I click, on, we have the, the choice of looking at advanced search and you can actually really target in by using the width to say your term must be within these two words, either order. You could use the ands and ors and nots here. You get additional field codes if you need to do like only title and abstract. That's, this is where you'd find it and you can add it to your search the query string, i.e. search statement, um, by using the plus signs here. You don't have to use the advanced. You can use, just click on documents. Documents is the default search. And you can use the preset um, lines here. The default is going to be article, the title, the abstract, the keyword. You have some choices here to choose from. And you can add in a different lines. And this works well when you want to do ors in one line and and. Um, so it depends on how much power you want in your search and how much time you have to actually do the search. Um, you can always contact your librarian to get help with setting it up. Um, and, da -da -da. Um, and then if you come down, you see your search history where you can see how you searched and you can combine these sets here. You can also save them as alerts for um, topics. So I've spent a lot of time on Scopus. Um, one thing I want to touch on really quick before we leave here for PubMed is that if you look at a record, so I clicked on one of the search sets to pop up some records. Um, and I'm going to click on number seven because I see there's some citations on the right and I'm going to look at the record. Um, to get to the article, there's the full text. That's how you click on it. You want to say, I want to um, get to the full text like everything else. Um, here's the record, the citation, the authors, where they work. Um, hey, Buffalo, my own stuff, old stomping ground. Um, the abstract, you can see keywords. So this might be another way to get to generate terms lists is to come to the actual record. M-tree again goes to the M-base database and you can see, ah, here's some terms, program evaluation, um, mesh, here's the terms. So maybe I want to change up my search again. If I look down below, I see the references they use. So this is your cited reference searching and Scopus is brilliant at this. Um, there's 40 references in here. I can look at these and I can pull these out easily by, you know, here's the links, here's the how many times these have been cited, um, here's um, find full text. If I want to save these citations to my list, I do have to use the results format. That's one drawback. The other direction I can go on this, going back up towards the top, instead of looking at the footnotes and going back in time, I can look at the cited by documents and I see there's eight here and I can see if any of these going into the future because this article that I'm looking at was published two years ago in 2016. And I can look at these eight citations and I can see they're going into the future, 2017. Um, and so that's another way to search in addition to searching by keyword subject headings um, is that you can look at who's citing whom. In CINAHL, 
actually was built to do this. So they actually um, have it set up that way. And it's a large database, so you get a fair amount of citations. Any questions on that? Okay, so I spent way more time on Scopus than I planned to. I'm gonna actually leave that up on um, that tab. I went back to the Health Sciences Library and I'm gonna go down to PubMed. And I open that in a new tab. Um, and I'm assuming, is it correct to assume that you all have used PubMed? Yes? Okay, so, so here's the thing when you type in a term in PubMed. So PubMed, in contrast to Scopus, is the helpful assistant. Um, so if I type in sexually acquired diseases in PubMed, I probably actually wouldn't, I mean, if I'd already gone through all this with Scopus, I would say like, that term didn't really give me anything. Um, but I'm doing it because I want to point out some things in PubMed is if I type in a term in this um, search box, PubMed comes back with results, but it shows me the search details and tells me what it thinks I'm looking for. And in this case, it thinks I'm looking for sexual behavior. So that's the mesh term. So somebody asked about finding mesh terms. Is one of the ways you can see what comes up is by looking at the search details in your PubMed searches. And I could look through that and say, ooh, I don't want sexual behavior. That might be something that I want to put into my second part of my search, but I'm like, that's not really what I'm looking for. So I know right away that I want to change my search and I'm going to put in transmitted. And I can see that my citations have gone up. Um, then if I come down here, I'm like, oh, okay, sexually transmitted diseases mesh term. So that's one tip when I'm searching in PubMed is I'm usually trying to see if my subject, if my keywords that I type in, if they actually match with a subject heading with a mesh term in the details box. And if they do, even if it's not the same exact phrase, I'm usually like, okay, great. I'm in the, I'm on the right track. You see that, so you see that what PubMed's doing for you, um, and I'm going to go over this, so bear with me if you already know. It's going to look for a mesh term, it found it, check, it got that. Then it's going to do that Boolean and, that sexually and transmitted and disease, so that's pretty broad search. And then it's going to do an, excuse me, an exact phrase, quotation mark sexually transmitted diseases. The, these two are going to be in all fields meaning title, abstract, um, author's name, author affiliation, the subject heading, so it's going to be all over the place. So um, if you think, well, you know, this one with the ands, that's just going to be way too broad. Um, I can take that out, so I can change up my search down here in search details, and then I can click search and redo it. Um, so that's a tip to look at. Do you always have to look at search details? No. Um, if you know your topic, you're probably good to go. I do look at it. A tip is when I look at it is if I'm trying to figure out what my search term list is. So if I have a new search, like when people ask me, oh, would you do a search on this topic? Um, so I'm going to be working on some searches this afternoon. I am actually going to be playing around with the subject headings, and that's one of the places I'm going to look. And having looked, and usually I come into PubMed first. I did want to show that like in Scopus, you really have to build it up because unlike PubMed, it's not pulling in any other terms. Um, the next thing is I want to talk about um, mesh terms. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to delete all these other terms up here. We might not actually get to sin all. I apologize for that. Um, so PubMed, if I, click on the pull down arrow, I actually can get to any of the databases created by the National Library of Medicine. So I'm going to scroll down and one of them is mesh. I like to think of it more as an index or directory and then click on search. And so one of the online folks had asked about mesh. Mesh is actually stands for medical, the ME is medical, S and H is subheadings. 
So medical subheadings. So this is actually just a listing of subheadings. There's no articles in here, even though it looks the same as well. So if I look at sexually transmitted diseases, it's like, oh yeah, I've got three options here. Which one do you want? I'm gonna click on the first one to show that record. So what this tells me is that, oh, there's a mesh term. And if you're old school like me, you can think of that as a label on a file folder. Um, if you're new school, you could think of it maybe as a Pinterest label or as a topic heading for subjects in a blog. Um, so those are your mesh terms. And hopefully you control them or keep them clean or consistent. So that's what they try to do with mesh is control it or keep it clean. Um, and when you look at this, it tells you that it was started in 1987 and it gives you a definition because it's still largely humans that read through these articles and assign these subject headings. Um, so they have subject specialists and they get paid to read articles all day long um, or whatever their contract is. I'm not sure if they were bullies. The first set of terms is your subheadings and this is a way to narrow it down. So you might say, hey, wait, there's prevention and control right there. So I could look at sexually transmitted and say, I want only that facet of my term. The next thing is that it has um, restrict a major topic. So you could say, I only want it where this subject heading is the major theme of the article. So if you're looking at a targeted search as opposed to a broad search, you can narrow it down this way. Um, the next part is what terms get tagged. So if I see sexually transmitted disease as a mesh term, that means the author wrote about sexually transmitted diseases, STI, varial, venereal diseases, um, infections, et cetera. And so this is actually, if you're, if you're doing a comprehensive search, this is a great place to come to come up with your words list. Because remember, in Scopus, we had to feed in all the terms. It made no assumptions for us, unlike PubMed who said, oh, you typed in this term. That matches with this mesh term. I will search your term plus this mesh term. And when it finds a mesh term, notice that there's more specific terms underneath it. These are also mesh terms because we've talked about gonorrhea and syphilis and stuff. These are mesh terms that get assigned to articles that are specifically about that. They don't assign STDs to an article about chlamydia. They file it under chlamydia. But what they'll do is they, it's called exploding. I think of it as expanding. Whenever PubMed, when you search on a broader term, it automatically includes these more specific terms. So me typing in sexually transmitted diseases, PubMed's actually gone off and it's found um, one, two, three, I forget how many are underneath this plus sign. So there's more under here, four, five, six. And, and it, so that was the bacterial ones. Then it also got the viral ones so seven, eight, nine, ten. So it actually got a whole armful of additional terms. So it's actually automatically expanding your search. And that's what this checkbox is up here, where it says, do not include mesh terms found below this term. So the hierarchy is this cascade down here. And the terms below are the more specific mesh terms. And PubMed automatically includes those. Um, and you can turn that off because sometimes you might say, well, really, I only want STDs in general and then I want you know, chlamydia specifically. So I could say, no, 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 don't take them all. Just take that and I could add that to the search. So I have, it's actually, I'm building up my search here and you see no EXP, no explode. Don't be expanding or exploding this. Then I can go to chlamydia by clicking on that term and it'll, I'm still in mesh. I can take that term. And then on the right, I'm gonna change that to or. And I can, again, I could say Oop, prevention and control. Um, do I need to, I mean, do you want the more, there's some specific terms under here. I've got to make another choice again. Do you want these? You might say, oh, yes, I do. And then you're good to go. Or you can say, no, I don't. And then you could say, add that to the search builder. Um, so does that make sense on how powerful that is. Another, I, I'd like to, sh rehabilitation's a fun word to look at, as you can see all the different ways of rehabilitation. United States is another one, because if you put in the United States, 
all the states are subject headings, and so PubMed will automatically explode to catch U.S. or Alabama or Arkansas or Wisconsin, etc. Whereas in Scopus, you would actually have to key in every single state name, um, which is why I can't recommend enough. If you have a search you're going to do over again, put it in a Word or a Google document so that you can copy and paste it. All right, so how do I get out of here? I, to get back to PubMed, because remember, we're only looking at mesh terms. I can click on search Medline, and it takes me back to PubMed. So I see that up here. <coughs> Here's my search. They're all mesh terms, and I have quite a few of these, so I, again, have to build, work through my search. I, I have the prevention, but I might want to do the program evaluation, etc. Um, one thing here is the mesh terms. I said that people actually apply these. It can take one to three months for those to get applied. So you might actually, we do have some pretty current articles from January, so we're actually pretty good. But um, you might say, well, maybe I also want to get it if it's in the title or the abstract. Um, so this is where it comes in because I can't just do, what am I doing? Um, If I just type this in and press enter, what's going to happen? Pardon? It might not work just because you need to find where you're searching. Right. Brackets. Yeah. I mean, it'll actually work. The search will work. But what's going to happen is we're going to go back up to a huge amount because if I, if I don't define it, I mean, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you could put it in quotation marks. That would actually take it out of mesh and it wouldn't explode it. But one of the things I want to point out is that remember when I went in, I didn't want to explode this term. And if I just put in a term and I don't define it, it will find the mesh again and it automatically explodes it again. So you just undid all that work we did by going painstakingly into mesh. So that's where advanced comes in. So if I come into advanced, um, advanced isn't as fancy as Scopus, so it's not quite as like, whoa, where are we? Um, this is where your history is, so I do like to point that out. So if you need to copy and paste this somewhere, they also have this quick download where you can download it to an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and you can actually use the fields here. It says all fields in the builder. And you can say, oh, I want just title and abstract. So you can say, what if I wanted just in the title and abstract. You tell PubMed, don't go pulling it out in mesh. Don't go exploding on it and giving me all those other terms. I could now click back on advanced. Um, you could do this in one set, but this is one way to do it. So I can say I want to add number nine, which is my STDs and title, and you can see that it pops it up here. And then I could say, and I want my mesh terms, so that's number seven, and I add it up here. And, and I want to change this to an or, so you got to remember that it's you got to pay attention to what the defaults are. And then I can click search. Um, and so that gives me my set there. So it lets me play around with fields. So again, if I click on advanced, um, this is where I can say I want to use the author or I want to use, um, let's see, let's, if you want to look for specific journals, you can build a set that way. The mesh fields, that's similar to using the index field in Scopus. You have to know what the subject headings are. There's a few that I do, but most of them I have not committed to memory. So I usually use the mesh browser first. Um, but the title abstract, that one's really helpful. Um, if you like shortcuts, if you look down in your history, you'll see that it has bracket, straight brackets, title slash abstract, straight bracket. That um, is a shortcut, so you could actually type that. So if I go back to PubMed Home, and I'm here, and I want to do sorry. 
I can do, if I remember that, I can actually type that in and tell it, search it, this phrase here. Um, somebody mentioned quotation marks. If I do quotation marks in PubMed, especially without any fields on it, it will actually turn off the match to, mat to mesh. So um, generally in PubMed, I don't do, you have to do it in Scopus, but I generally don't do it in PubMed unless I specifically want an exact phrase and I don't want it to look for the mesh terms. Um, I know we're right at two o'clock, but I want to point out, um, I got a little too excited by Scopus. Spent a little too much time there. <clears throat> um, on the left-hand side, you have the filters. You do have filters in Scopus. They're not as robust as the ones in PubMed in that they don't give you the same options. PubMed has the article types. If you click on customize, you see that this is where, this is another way you could narrow this down. You could look at clinical trials. Are you looking at comparative <coughs> studies? They do have evaluation studies, um, observational studies, et cetera. You see they don't have cohort studies in here. That's a mesh term. So you would actually put that up at the top with cohort studies. And again, it'll explode. It'll catch ones like re re um, retrospective and prospective. Some additional ones, if you click on additional filters, Scopus does have languages, um, but they don't have the ages. PubMed has ages, which is very helpful. They are preset, they are preset ages, so you kind of have to go with what they have. Um, if you're trying to narrow down to article types, research types in Scopus, you have to think of what the methodology is, and you have to think of um, what terms you have. And so you could do like, and I'm not sure I'm going off road here. If I were looking for randomized control trials, if you want just a real quick tip, if you put in random and you put the asterisk, which is the truncation or wildcard symbol to get random, randomly randomized randomization, um, that, the, and the asterisk works in PubMed, works in Scopus, works in CINAHL. Um, that'll actually should get you some randomized control tools. So, are there any questions or? So, I didn't uh, make use of some asterisk marks actually used. I didn't understand. Is it when you use a short form of the word and then you use it? Or? Um, so if I put in random, yes, yeah, so if I put in random with the asterisk, that is the same as typing in random or Oops, I put an extra L in there. Yeah, so I could key in all the different endings of random. So the asterisk gets all your suffixes. So like another one that comes in handy is um, if I wanted child or childhood or children, I could do child and that would get all the different child. Um, another one would be neoplas. So if I did neoplas, we'd get neoplastic, neoplasias, neoplasms. Now you do want to be careful because if you do stuff like cat, you'll get cataracts, catatonic, cataleptic, cat or cats. Um, so you have to think about it sometimes if it's a shorter term. So that's another way to broaden out your search if you don't want to type in all the terms. Um, of course, it's not going to get you the mesh terms in PubMed, but if you're searching in Scopus, it doesn't matter. Um, and I, if you have to go, I understand, but I, there's a couple of things I want to touch on. And since we're recording this, I figure I'll keep going a little bit. Um, just to touch on those, and then if you have to come back, you can scroll through the recording to get to that. Because I want to point out um, that what Scopus's claim to fame is the cited reference searching. PubMed actually has, um, let me back, I'm going to click on advanced to get a different set of results. Um, I'll just take this one. So PubMed has one of the features that I really like is the similar articles. Um, so if I thought this article was 
on target for what it's looking for, I can click similar articles and PubMed will run a search on it. It'll take that article and it'll pull terms from the title and the abstract. And you can look up under their help if you're really into what their algorithm is. Um, and then it came up with 110 because the one is the article I started with. And then these are the ones that PubMed thinks are relevant or similar. And you can say it's, n it's by relevance, not by date. So we have 2018, 2016, 2017, 16, 02. So it's not gonna be by most current, it's gonna be by relevance. So this is another way to find citations that are useful. <coughs> um, so feel free to use the similar articles feature. The next one is actually in Scopus, we had lists in PubMed, you have clipboard, so I could select these citations. I could select the ones that looked relevant. And if I come up to send to, and I can add it to clipboard, um, and then that's my temporary list. Um, so that makes it easy so that I can keep gathering things as I go along. Um, I, from send to, I could email, I could save to my collections, um, or I could add it to my citation manager, which would be EndNote, the reference manager. Um, I can do the same from the clipboard. It all depends. Am I ready to send it off or do I need to batch them up? So that's the equivalent to list. Um, I also want to talk about signing into my NCBI so you can create an account. It's always in the upper right. Um, you can use a preset login like Google or you can register for an NCBI account. Um, Let's see. So if I go in and I have my account, if I go to advanced, because I didn't see any of my searches, if I go to advanced, I could, if I, there was a search I wanted to, I could click on the search on underneath search number and I could save it to my NCBI. I can also save a search from the main screen. So if I have a search going, if I have a search showing in the, site to, in the search box, I could create an alert, which is saving my search. So that's what I would cl click on. It's gonna say, what do you wanna name it? These are your search terms. And then, I, yes, please, I wanna update how often, what format. If you just wanna save the search, you can say no thanks. To get to your searches, you would click on My NCBI, and you will see your saved searches, and then you'll see your collections. Your collections are assumed to be private, but you can make them public, which gives you a URL that you can share with colleagues. Um, so you can share those, pretty cool. Um, when you're logged in, it'll save your search history for, I think it's at least three months. So if you forget something, you need to come back. You can find it. And here's one piece. Um, I'll walk through this so it's on the recording. If I go to NCBI site preferences, because PubMed is a free database, but if you just go directly to pubmed.gov off campus, it's not gonna know you're with MU unless you're logged in as your account and unless you set up your PubMed preferences, specifically outside tool to University of Missouri. And that way it'll have the find it at MU so you can get to the full text. So I can click on outside tool, which sounds like an insult. Um, they have almost all the universities in the world, so you're gonna wanna click on U, and then it's about halfway down. So you just kind of take that slider halfway down and you see University of Missouri Columbia, check that. You can only check one institution at a time. So if you change affiliations or have multiple affiliations, you'd have to go back and forth to see who has the better library. <laughs> um, and scroll up or down, click save, and then it's set. And what that means is that if I log on to any computer anywhere, I don't, as long as I'm logged into my NCBI, my RevGraves account, it's gonna know that I'm with MU. So if I click on my NCBI, and then to get back to PubMed, it's showing PubMed here, I can just click on search. Um, and to get back to a search, I'll click on advanced and I'll pull up one of the sets. 
if I click, if I say, you know, I really, so these are free articles, so it doesn't matter who I am, where I am, I could get those first ones. Um, but if I'm looking at number, um, say I wanted to look at number nine, that one, it's not free. So if I'm not on campus, it's not seeing that I'm with MU, I can use the find it at MU to get to the full text. Um, which I'm assuming most of you know, but um, I hate it when people have to pay for articles. Um, so you shouldn't have to pay. And here's the full text over here on the left. Um, if you have any problems, you can report a problem. You can also request a copy. So if it ever comes up and says not available at MU, look for the request a copy because you can use the interlibrary loan, which is free to you. The libraries pick up the cost. And that's true for all the databases. Um, so those were the big pieces in PubMed. Um, and since we're recording, I'm going to touch it real quick on CINAHL. I'm not going to go into the searching, finding the subject headings, but I do want to point out you can create an account the same way by clicking on sign in um, and you would save an account. Um, folder is the same as lists and clipboard, so it gives you a temporary account. So that's how you would work that piece. Um, CINAHL is actually somewhat helpful of a database. So if I type in a term, it's gonna come to subject headings and thank you for coming. Sorry, I went over. Um, and it's gonna give you options to check from them. You can keep it if you want. <laughs> Um, and so you could select the ones you want. You see that they break it down by viral, by protozoal, fungal, bacterial, and they have the broader one. Um, so this is based off the MeSH terms. So a lot of people see this and say, what do I do with So I clicked on sexually transmitted diseases. And so I'm looking at the, you know, the tree list that branches out. And if I come down to see my term, here it is highlighted. You can see the ones that are indented. And in PubMed, I mentioned that PubMed automatically explodes or expands to include the more specific ones. CINAHL doesn't, you have to turn it on. So I could turn it on. I could check it because this column is explode. And then you also get the subheadings. So I could also pick subheadings. Um, and then it puts it in a basket on the right and I can click search. Um, so if you're going through one term at a time, Leave it as it is. Just type in one term, click search. That's good for finding sub, um, the search terms, like which term should I use? It gives you suggestions. But you might say, well, wait, I don't want to search that way. I know my terms or I want to do a quick and dirty search. There is that little check box here. Um, so if I uncheck that, then I can use all of these boxes similar to Scopus. So I could put in sexually And I'm going to jump down, somebody else teed it in, and then I could put in prevention, and then I could put in program evaluation. And you can see that it actually is going to, if you leave the fields unselected, it'll do all fields, but you could actually pick a specific field if you wanted to narrow it down. It defaults to and, and then I'm going to click search. And so I get 189. My search history is right here in the middle of the screen, so that's easy to find. I could look through these. I could add them to the folder as I go um, and then share them. There are some refined results on the left. I'm almost done, make it an even 15 minutes over. Um, CINAHL has, you can narrow it to peer reviewed. Um, Scopus PubMed do not. You can narrow it to just research articles. Scopus PubMed don't. Scopus, you have to type in your methodology terms. PubMed, you can use the, you can either type them in or you can use the article types. Um, and there's also show more that pops up here. So again, you can look at your article types if you want to specify clinical trials, systematic reviews. You could do peer reviewed, you can do age groups here, you can exclude Medline records. Um, so you've got some options here. Um, and I'll close out of here. So that makes it easy. So that, 
So in addition to going back to the top of the hour, CINAHL is really focused on nursing and nursing topics, so it's got better subject heading for that. It also lets you do these pre-check boxes for just give me research. I don't care what kind, just research. Or give me peer review. So those can be quick tips, and that could tip you to, do I want to search CINAHL? Um, and I think, I'm, yeah, I mentioned that you can sign in. So sorry that I went over 15 minutes. Um, I didn't need to chop this down. So if anybody has any questions, all right. Um, you're always welcome to contact us. If you do have questions um, to ask us to help you with searches, we can meet with you either in person or in person via Zoom. Um, so thank you for attending and thank you for your patience for the extra 15 minutes. Yay. And I was like, oh, Scopus. <laughs>